then he needs about $50,000 in funding. And he'll trade that through a broker. Now, his plan is, and this is what we sat down with, he's using Top Step. He has no interest in going into a live account for them. So he's trying to get to $10,000. When he makes $10,000, he's cashing out. He's taking that $10,000 and he's putting it in a real brokerage. Then he's going to trade that account up to what I just described. He's not rushing. He's not trying to go crazy pyramiding. He's just constantly just building it, building it, and building it. After two months, I would like for him to go from trying to just get to $1,000 a week, which is what he grosses at his job. He actually grosses just below $1,000. He doesn't even really make $1,000, but it's like $980, some dollars, $990, something like that. That's what he earns. That's not a lot of money. But the good side, the upside is, is he doesn't need to do much to make that same amount of money trading. Now, for some of you, you think, wow, $1,000 a week. <laughs> if I could do that, I would be successful because you're never making profitable, uh, consistent weeks, are you? You might make a money here, you might make a little bit of money there. Maybe you had a payout or two, but you end up blowing the accounts when you get back in there and try to do it again. You, you'll, you'll pass combines easily. I can pass a combine in two days, man. And then when you get the funded account, what do you do? You shit the bed. Why? Because you're in a rush to make money, more money than you need right now. Who said you have to make $10,000 this month? Who said you have to make five grand? Who says you have to make $1,200 today in this trade? You did. Nobody gave you that idea. You did. So I'm giving Caleb the goal. I'm giving Caleb the expectation to just simply take the trades that's given to you. Don't think about how much money you have to make that day because you don't know what that set, that framework is going to yield to you. Every trade is going to have a potential to make different amounts of money and different risks involved. So you have to just submit yourself to whatever the market is giving you that day based on the framework, that first fair value gap. Are we gapping opening higher? Okay, great. If the gap opening higher is occurring, that means your 30-minute bias inside the opening range is bearish. And you're going to try to use that first presented fair value gap as something to go short in. Is that hard? Is that logic that's complica complicated or complex? Nope. Mm -mm. And then I'm going to teach him to focus on a new week opening gap or new day opening gap clustering where there's several of them and below an old low or relative equal lows. And that's his terminus. That's where it's going to draw to. That's not ambiguous. That's not something that's constantly evolving and changing. It's never ascertainable and never be able to see it in the, in the charts. It's not hidden from him. It's not hidden from you now. That's his model. And you've been watching all the individual components deliver every single day in live stream. He has to be able to do that in his own hands. Now, he's going to have some problems. He's going to lose. He's going to take some losses and whatnot. And it's good for him to have that. I could sit there and tell him over his shoulder right now and say, push the button now, put your stop here, take your target there. I could do that. I could tell him, this is what you do, and we can run the account up to $20,000 in the first week. And it'd be no problem at all. Easy, easy, easy. But that's not teaching him. I need him to feel the weight of driving back and forth to that job having those rotating days off because that's the motivator. That's what got him to the party here. And if I remove that real quick, he's going to get comfortable. He's going to get lazy. I don't want that. I need him to be salty about where he works. He's thankful he has the job, but he does not like it. I don't like it for him. I can't wait for him to get better at what he's trying to do here. Because then once he has that under his belt, he'll never have a job again. He'll never think, I hope I get hired for this job. He'll never have that thought process. He'll be unemployable. He will not be someone that can be bought for exchange for time. And when someone has that, when they have that perspective on their own being, their self-worth, that is wonderful. Because no company could pay me enough. To go to work for them. And that's how you should think about yourself. You're such a wonderful 
enterprise, such a high end yielding income enterprise, you incorporated, you're so fucking amazing. You're so well equipped and financially literate that you can go out there and carve your own existence out financially. You don't need to have a job, but you've been lied to since grade school that the American dream is to get a good education, get yourself a good job, buy yourself a 30 year mortgage, and you're happy. That is not what it is. Happiness is being your own person, a free person, someone that's not tethered to someone else like a slave master and says, you must perform this or you're worth nothing to me. You're useless to me unless you come to work on time. And when I, when I call you to work, you better fucking show up. If you don't show up on time, I'm going to punish you. I'm going to dock you. I'm going to reprimand you. That's a slave master. There's no other way around that. That's exactly what that is. You are a slave. You are a slave. You're all on the same plantation. And I was on the plantation too. But I broke and ran. Every time that hammer came down and I'm doing the, the master's labor, selling my time for far too little money, giving up time with my own kids that I can't get back. I, every other instance, I'd hit the hammer at work and then I'd hit the hammer on that chain. And over time, I weakened that, that chain. And when it, came, it came time for me to run and I had the opportunity to break away from that shit, I did. And I never fucking looked back. I never looked back. And I didn't give a fuck how anybody thought of how I did it. I didn't care. I had to get off that plantation. I had to get out of there. I couldn't do it anymore. And that's why I make my kids work because they have to have that. When they get that in their, in their system, they can't stand it, that they're being prostituted for far too little money, being controlled and told, you must do this or you're worthless to me. Bitch, you're useless to me as an employer. You ain't paying me enough to be here. I don't care about you. I don't care about your company. I don't give a fuck about Carl. And you ain't my future. I got to go. We're divorcing right now. Goodbye. See ya. And run down the road. Chase and pursue that future. That future that's yours. How many years have you fucking wasted at the jobs you're at right now? Think about that. Think about it. Who kept you there? The employer didn't. They're not, they're not keeping you there. You're making the decision to get up and go to work there every day you're scheduled. You're doing that. And you need to change your perspective about that because that is a vampire sucking the life out of you. It's stealing joy. It's stealing opportunity. It's stealing freedom. It's stealing success. It's holding you back. So it's far time right now for you to start thinking about what you're going to do to separate yourself from that when it's advantageous for you to do that. And the uncomfortable state of being while you're there, let it fuel you. Let that be the catalyst that keeps you going. That's the wind in your sails. That's the steam in your engine that says, it's going to be hard. It's going to take longer than I want it to. But guess what? When I finally leave, when I walk up to fucking Carl and I tell him, you look here, you little motherfucker. You're a company man and good for you. But you can go fuck right off. I'm out of here. See ya. I told you. I told you this day was coming. Kiss my ass. Goodbye. And leave him as a company man that he is. You're not a company man. You're not a company woman. You are a corporate man, a corporate woman of you incorporated. You, you're the corporate. You're the business. And you need to start minding your business like you give a fuck about it. You need to be building up you incorporated and stop worrying about so much of what your bosses and co uh, is corporations making. Because they're you can put out more effort, but they're never going to compensate you for that increased effort. Because they own you. In trading, you need to think about what you're doing. Are you taking a stupid fucking risk right now? What's the, what's the, what was the catalyst that causes you to want to take that trade right now? You're pushing the button right now based on what kind of stimuli? Is it based on, on the model that you're trading? 
Or are you basing it on somebody that said something to you? Or you read something that made you feel uncomfortable and you want to be able to show them something? Are you trying to replace something that you're experiencing in your personal life? Relationship breakup, health diminishing. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe they said you're redundant. You got to get out of here. Wonderful. That's a good thing. Because now it's got fire on your ass. You better do something. What are you going to do? Start learning how to be financially literate. It doesn't take long to learn how to replace your job. It does take a long time for you to stop thinking stupid shit and repeating stupid shit and telling yourself eventually it's going to give you a different result. I did that as a young 20 year old. I kept telling myself the things I was doing, I was going to break it. It wasn't going to break me. And the only thing it was doing was allowing me to manifest the very thing that I thought I was avoiding, which was losing and blowing accounts. And I would blow the accounts every single time. I would go in there, try a new method, try a new concept, tinker this, tinker that, take this away, change the settings, start another book, use a different author, diff different methodology, blend methodologies, put pieces of this one and put it in that one. And all that shit didn't work. And I'm convinced, folks, listen to this one, ready? I'm convinced if someone external from my own person, me, the creator of Smart Money Concepts, if I saw someone else like me and I was exposed to this content at 20, before I recognized my own character flaws, before I recognized all the shit that I was doing wrong and how I thought, I would have still blown my accounts using what I'm teaching you today because my mind was wrong. My perspective on life, on money making and about my own abilities and why I didn't deserve it. Cause back then I didn't think I deserved it. Deep down inside, I did not believe I deserved it. Something was broken inside of me. I came from very low income family. I came from People that did not encourage one another in my family. And I was in abusive relationships as a child, left in dangerous situations. So I had trust issues. I had uh, every possible thing that could have happened to a child. That, that was what I was exposed to. So I had a very twisted perspective on everything. So I had to fix a lot of that stuff. And it wasn't an immediate fix. So even though that I know today that my concepts, my approach to reading and, and trading the marketplace is the highest superior form of speculation and market analysis, there's nothing higher than this because this gets right to the market, right to the tick, why it should, why it shouldn't, when it will, when it won't. No other methodology does that type of stuff. It gives you the nuts and the bolts as to why it will, why it won't, and times it. It literally spits in the face. Everybody says you cannot time the market. You're out of your fucking mind. We do it all the time. No pun intended. But even knowing what I have now as its final form, if it was given to me at 20 years old when I first started, I would have lost money using it. Because I didn't have the right mindset about what I was doing. I was rushing to get out of the job side. And I was just using it as a lottery. If I could just make five grand a month, I'm quitting. And I would have quit my job with the first $5,000 that made. And then I'd be fucking scared to death because I have to now trade. When I first learned how to trade, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to time the market. I didn't know what I was looking for for a setup. It was just chasing price. But when you quit your job and you don't have any money, you're not funded from your personal life, that has to be assured. You got to give yourself 24 months of living expenses, not affluent living expenses. You have to have 24 months of making your ends meet. That means you don't have to put a trade on every day. And you have to have at least 50 grand as capital. And you can disagree with that all you want. But those that ask me, that's what I tell you. Minimum 50 grand, ideally 100 grand. Two years in the bank, 
yielding interest because you're not gonna you're not gonna want to dip into it, but you have it in case you do. And then you have your well-funded trading account. And if you aim for one and a half percent per week, fifteen hundred dollars is fifteen hundred dollars. It may not meet your present needs right now, but most of you probably don't even make that right now. Most of you probably don't even make a thousand dollars a week. And those that are in other countries don't even make a thousand dollars a month. So when you see the potential of using these concepts, you where you're at geographically in third world nations, you would would be considered affluent making fifty thousand dollars a year. But you're trying to make fifty thousand dollars in a month because you see these people that are using 20 accounts and they're parlaying it up. But I promise you, they're scared shitless. They're stressed out. They're thinking about that shit before they go to bed and they're thinking about it before they wake up. That's not what trading is supposed to be. That's gambling. And you incorporated is not a casino. And many of you are treating your trading like casino. Where you're just placing bets and hoping for the best. And worst case scenario, I just got to pay for resets. What the fuck is that? That's, that's asinine. How about have one account? Have one account where you only got to worry about that one account. Grow it mo modestly, modularly, soundly. Build the experience without having greed attributed to it. Because when you don't know how to trade well and you compound it by having 10, 15, 20 accounts, and then add to it even more that you're trading with other prop firms. In addition to that, you're trying to get the maximum. If a trader's really, really well versed in trading and they have that much quote unquote capital, there should be no reason why they should be shut out of their account. Like I've had students already have happened to them. They make too much money in the fund account company say, all right, it's time to go. <laughs> okay, pay me out. Have a good life. See you later. They should be able to do that quickly. But you see them constantly rotating through resets, resets, resets. And the reason why they're doing that is because they're compounding the degree of difficulty with the inherent risks. Instead of the saying, I'm going to trade with one contract. I'm going to trade with one contract and I'm going to focus on being excellent about my trading with one contract and then get good at that. And then what you've done is you replaced any opportunity for greed or performance fear and anxiety, living up to expectations that the social media crowd would want of you. <clears throat> Everybody's got to be a multi-millionaire payout now or you're not the king of trading you're not the goat of trading anybody and even though you just recently saw somebody using my concepts do it the the aspects of over leveraging anybody can do that they can find themselves in a parlayed over leveraged stream of of trades where it just happened to yield out a very large payout. But can it be done again? Can it be replicated again? There's other prop firms out there. Can it be done again? Or one of, one of those instances, once in a lifetime, everything fell in favor. The market was just moving so heavy handedly. And then there you go. It just popped out like it's supposed to magically appear. I don't want my trading like that. You shouldn't want your trade like that. As much as it is nice to have a million dollars, but a million dollars is not that much money.